Louisville, morning. It's so good to see you today. I hope you guys had a great weekend. I had an absolutely fantastic weekend. Um, you know, Memorial Day was was last week, and I know a lot of you uh, probably use that as an opportunity to go out. You know, as a pastor, I'm working on Sundays, and and so those weekends get kind of broken up. And so we usually try to go the weekend before, the weekend after, to uh, to take a little break for our our family so that we can focus on church during those weekends. And so we got out in into uh, uh, into into some of the places in North Carolina we haven't seen. We went up toward uh, the Hanging Rock uh, Park and and got to do some kayaking in the Dan River up near Danbury and just had an absolute blast. It was such a, a great time to be with with our family. There were four of us. We're, we're still missing one in Oklahoma, but um, but we're glad he's doing what he's doing. So I hope you guys had a great week. It was it was absolutely beautiful. I got a, a little bit of sun, but don't think I got too much sunburn. I think I had like one little spot where I missed uh, some suntan lotion, but it was but it was all good. But you know, this month, the month of June, we're going to be spending it talking about uh, family, talking about the importance of family. In fact, this week on Sunday, we talked about kind of the origin of family. Where where did um, you know where did the family come from? Where did we get that institution? And so we went all the way back to uh, all the way back to the time of 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 Genesis chapter one and two, Adam and Eve. And, and so it was a really, really interesting way to go back and, and see how from the very beginning, we have been created to be people in relationship, but not the casual relationship, the type of relationship that is a forever together type of relationship. And so I wanted to kind of keep working on that. And, you know, if you read some of those early books of the Bible, if you've never read the Bible before, I know a lot of people think it's like doing a normal book, you know, pick up the book, start in chapter one and read your way through. If you, if you start somewhere in the middle, you're going to miss important points. You're not going to know who the characters are, but the Bible's not written like that. It's a group of 66 individual books that have uh, individual purposes and messages that they're trying to convey. And and honestly, if you start at the beginning, and I know many of you probably have, you 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 know read Genesis and there's some you know stories we remember in Genesis, you know, the Adam and Eve's, the Noah's and the things like that. You know, we'll remember um, we'll remember some some Abraham stories, maybe some Moses stories, but but man, you start getting into Exodus and then Leviticus and the Numbers, and and it gets it gets rough to get through that. And a lot of us give up reading our Bible just because we're trying to read it that way. And so, um, and so I always encourage people: Hey, if you want to read the Bible, start in the Gospels. You know that is the central message of the Scriptures. Anyway, start with you know Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Um, I usually recommend starting with John, um, but but start in the Gospels. Read Acts. Read Romans. Th- those those books are a great place to start. And once you have that foundation, it's important to go back because, because so much of what goes on in the New Testament has been set up by, by the foundation of the Old Testament. And so it's important to know that. But know Jesus first. Know your New Testament first and then go back and do the Old Testament. And so we're going to do something unique. I'm going to read one of those what we might call boring passages in um, in those early books in Genesis chapter 5. And, um, and just starting in, in verse 6, it says, when Seth had lived 105 years, he became the father of Enosh. And after he became the father of Enosh, Seth lived 807 years and had other sons and daughters. And altogether, Seth lived a total of 912 years. And then he died. And when Enosh had lived 90 years, he became the father of Kenan. And after he became the father of Kenan, Enosh lived 815 years and had other sons and daughters. And altogether, Enosh lived a total of 905 years. And then he died. And when Kenan lived 70 years, he became the father of Mahaliel. And after he became the father of Mahaliel, Kenan lived 840 years and had other sons and daughters. And altogether, Kenan lived a total of 910 years. And then he died. And Mahaliel lived 65 years and he became the father of Jared. And after he became the father of Jared, Mahaliel lived 830 years and had other sons and daughters. And altogether, Mahaliel lived a total of 895 years and then died. And when Jared had lived 162 years, he became the father of Enoch. And after he became the father of Enoch, Jared lived 800 years and had other sons and daughters. And altogether, Jared lived a total of 962 years and then he died. And when Enoch had lived 65 years, he became the father of Methuselah. And after he became the father of Methuselah, 
Methuselah, Enoch walked faithfully with God 300 years and had other sons and daughters, and altogether Enoch lived a total of 365 years, and Enoch walked faithfully with God. Then he was no more because God took him away. You know, this is a, a great passage to, to just see, you know, hey, here's a guy, he had a kid, he lived this long, and and clearly lived way, way longer than we live today. You can see the effects of being so close to the uh, the paradise that God had created us to live in, that we were designed uh, to, to be able to do so much more, but the corruption of our world has certainly had an effect on our bodies. But but a lot of times when we read those passages, we're like, what's the point of this passage? Why, why am I reading this guy? Names I can't even pronounce. And, and I'll give you a hint. If you're ever reading those scripture verses, you know, hit the first letter, the last letter, and the stuff in between. If you can't get it exactly right, just do the best you can. But don't spend five minutes trying to repeat the word and, and trying to get the name Zerubbabel out. It's just not going to happen. Just be comfortable saying the first letter and people will see, oh, it starts with a Z. We know who that is. But we go through this list. Why do we go through this list? Well, I think this list shows us, and in other places in scriptures, it shows us how important our family really is. I mean, I know nowadays there are a lot more people that are going in and looking at their ancestry and checking their ancestry. It's not necessarily one of those things that's big on my list. You know, I love the people that I knew, but somebody that lived, you know, 200 years ago and came over on a boat somewhere, I'm not as connected to that. But I know some of us are, you know, it's such a great way for us to have this connection uh, to the past to have this connection to to where our family came from and 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 I, I love to uh, you know I love to think about that when we look at the scriptures there's a reason why these these genealogies are written in the scriptures and I look at this particular genealogy and it starts from Adam if you start at the beginning of the chapter it goes from Adam all the way to to Noah so Methuselah and we know Methuselah because he's like the oldest man in the Bible and and Methuselah is the grandfather of Noah so we we, we see if we keep following that tree, we get down to Noah and we know Noah. So we have this list of people from, from Adam to Noah, this, this line of succession that, that God is, you know, making a covenant with Adam. He makes a covenant with Noah. He'll eventually make a covenant with Abraham and then Moses. And then he makes a covenant with David. And so we see this line of people he has a covenant with. But we go through this list and we see these people. We see these people that that lived and walked the earth, that, that, that had all these kids, that had these experiences that, that are hard for us to believe in. And, and we see their stories and we know how important that family is. You know, when, when God takes Adam and Eve and puts them together and says, you know, this is what's going to happen. You know, you'll, you'll leave your father and mother and the two of you become one flesh. And this, these stories of these genealogies are stories of people recounting what it meant for them to, to leave their father and mother, what it meant for the two of them to become one flesh in that sense. And so it's, it, they're, they're exciting stories. They're inspiring stories when we look at these things. And so, um, it, it's it's so good to be able to see those things happening, to be able to recount those stories and, and see those tales of things that are that are going on. But I think this one is even more peculiar, more particular. If we look at it, when we when we got to that very last person we talked to, we talked about a guy named Enoch, and Enoch had uh, was the father of Methuselah. But it tells us something very unique and very interesting about Enoch. If you saw there, it says after he became the father of Methuselah. There in verse twenty two. After he became the father of Methuselah, Enoch walked faithfully with God 300 years and had other sons and daughters. And so we see some things a little different. The pattern changed. We just had this pattern of, of you know, when their first son was born, um, how many more years they lived after that. And then, but with Enoch, it specifically says that Enoch walked faithfully with God. We don't know a lot about Enoch. I mean, this is really all we know, and, and he's referenced in the New Testament some, but, but we know that Enoch walked faithfully with God. And more than that, it said Enoch walked faithfully with God, then he was no more because God took him away. Ooh, because God took him away. I mean, we can think of really only one other incident where we see something like this happening in the Bible, you know, when Elijah and Elisha were together and, 
And it was the end of Elijah's, you know, ministry that he was doing. They had crossed the river. And, and he told, you know, Elijah was like, you know, can I take over the office for you? And he said, if you see me taken away, and that's where we get the, the chariot of fire that comes down and snatches him up. And Elijah says, I see you. And the cloak comes down and he puts on Elijah's cloak and he comes there. But there, there's these rare few people in scripture that, that for whatever reason, were close to God. And instead of them experiencing death, God God took them away, and Enoch is one of those. And how great is that to have that story in the midst of your family tree, to have that story in the midst of who you are? And it gets me thinking, who, what in your family tree, when you think back to, to, your, to your parents and grandparents and great-grandparents and beyond, what are those stories, those unique stories in your family that make you say, aha, you know, I have this connection. I know, um, I, I know where God was working in my family and what God was doing. I mean, I tell the story that um, I graduated from Oklahoma Baptist University, and I wasn't planning on going to Oklahoma Baptist University. My dad was teaching at Hardin-Simmons University, which which is a Baptist college in Abilene, Texas, where I graduated from high school and kind of had the option to go to some different places. And at the time in Texas where we lived, um, Baylor University was the big Baptist university. If you wanted to be, if you wanted to be a, a, a Baptist leader in Texas, you went to Baylor, then you went to Southwestern Theological Seminary. And, and that was kind of that formula for being, uh, being connected and a part of the, the Baptist scene in Texas. And so that was kind of my plan. I, I knew I was going to be a minister. I was going to go to Baylor and and um, went to a uh, one of those college fairs that they do and 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 visited this college fair and and they had like big schools in Texas you know the University of Texas and Texas A and M and and Baylor and Texas Tech they they were given like like entire rooms where people could come in and hear these lectures and and so I went to the Baylor lecture and talked to the people that were there and then went to the University of Texas one that's my dad's alma mater and so just wanted to see that and have an opportunity I knew they didn't have a, a ministry program but went and saw what what they were doing at the University of Texas booth. And we were just kind of heading out. And you know, the cafeteria is filled with all these little smaller schools all over the place. And and so you could find, you know, for, for where we were, a Howard Payne and a Wayland and and all, all those, you know, schools from Nacogdoches and, and the Panhandle State and all those things were all, you know, and we were walking by and we walked past Oklahoma Baptist University. And my mom just says, hey, Oklahoma Baptist University. It said the word Baptist. So um, in my mind, in my, in my arrogant little teenage mind. I was like, oh, she just sees the word Baptist. I don't want to go to some little Baptist school that I've never heard of. And she starts picking up brochures from it. And I'm like, mom, I'm not going to Oklahoma Baptist University. And as she's picking it up, she goes, did you know your grandmother and grandfather graduated from Oklahoma Baptist University? And I didn't. I, I, I didn't know that that's where they had gone. And my grandfather was a, a Baptist minister and a Baptist chaplain for for his entire life. And, and, and my grandmother, one of the most godly women I've ever known. And and at that moment, that legacy, that history, that, that my grandparents had gone to that school was that seed that the Holy Spirit put in my life and said, you know, maybe it's worth at least taking a look. And weirdly enough, God kept speaking to me, kept speaking to me, went to Baylor and did the tour down in Baylor. And Baylor, they told me all the great things about Baylor, that they were one of the top two schools for Baptists to send out missionaries and pastors. But the other school, the one that they were neck and neck with, was Oklahoma Baptist University. And I was like, well, God, is this your way of saying, instead of going to Baylor, this big school, this huge school that was changing with some of their beliefs and stuff, wouldn't it be better for you to go to a solid, godly Christian school? And that's what I did. I ended up going to Oklahoma Baptist University, getting my first ministry job there, met my wife there, got married while I was a student there, um, took my first uh, paid uh, ministry position, youth and music minister position in Fitzhugh. Hey, Steve, thanks for all your help getting me uh, where I am today. And God used that situation in so many different ways, so many ways that I can't even count uh, the blessings that I've received from, from making that decision. And it's all part of that legacy of who, 
of who my family is, what they had done, what they had become and, and what they had left to me. And so I want to encourage you, you know, in the comments below, tell me something great about your family. Tell me something great about somebody that's in your family tree. Maybe it's not as great as Enoch over here who, uh, who was caught up into heaven, but, but maybe it was a story like, like mine where, where your grandparents or great grandparents inspired you by something they did and it helped you become the person that you're going to be. I hope you have a great morning today. I'm going to pray for you and hope that you have a great day today. Our heavenly father, God, thank you so much for this day. Lord, I pray that you be with our church, Lord, that we would be faithful as we begin to open up more programs, as we begin to open up the building more. God, as we as we start our, our Sunday school, as we start our children's programs, as we start the, the new adventures that we have going on for us, Lord, I pray that you would be with us, minister uh, in, our, in our place, Lord. I pray, pray that you would lead us and guide us um, in the way eternal, Lord. I pray that you would be with our, our country, Lord. I pray that you would grant our, our president and vice president and wisdom and understanding. Lord, I pray that you give our Congress, God, uh, a sense of, of morality, a sense of, of doing what is right. Lord, I pray that you be with our governor and our lieutenant governor. And Lord, I pray that you would help them to seek you in their personal lives and their family lives, God, and the decisions they make that affect all of us. Lord, I pray that you bless us today. Lord, I pray that you bless our town. And Lord, help us bring the gospel message to the people here. Lord, we love you so much. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, God bless you all. I love seeing you guys here. Thanks so much for uh, spending a little time with this morning. I want to remind you tomorrow we're going to be doing this again, but Sweet Tea with the Pastors we're actually going to try to do down in the Fellowship Hall. And if we do in the Fellowship Hall, you are invited. So you can come, bring a cup. We'll make some tea. We'll make some coffee. You can bring your own beverage so that you're ready to go. But we're going to do it live. Now, if you come, we are going to have a camera that's pointed backwards that might be showing where you are. So don't be scared of that. But we want people that are watching to see that you're there celebrating with us and worshiping with us. All right. So we look forward to seeing that. God bless you guys. And we will see you again soon.